Hey everyone, this is Jay Clark from uh, Fargo 3D Printing. I'm with Stefan in the Raise 3D booth. So tell me a little bit about your role within uh, Raise 3D. Okay, um, Steve Sharadis. Uh, I am the National Account Director for Raise 3D. My mission is to work with manufacturers now, people that are not engineering firms, manufacturing firms, and work with them in terms of their prototyping and then also moving into the manufacturing space using the Race 3D printers. Yeah, because you guys have had a really great uh, um, kind of exposure because you guys are on the front cover of Make Magazine uh, recently. Right. So how has that kind of um, started, started to drive more of the Race 3D story? It's almost making me obsolete, right? I no longer <laughs> need, I don't like, no, truly, really, it, it, it helps a lot, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what's, I think, what we're so proud of is just the machine's capabilities. I mean, the, the, a lot of the designers, uh, what they really wanted to do was create a machine that had tremendous robust capabilities, commercial applications, and make it affordable to everyone, and really to take this industry and move it into the manufacturing space. So we have more and more clients these days that are approaching us, not only from a prototyping standpoint, but saying, you know, hey, listen, we'd like to start manufacturing this part. You know, we're only going to do a hundred run of this component, or we're going to do 500 uh, run of this component. It's a lot more cost effective for us now to have multiple machines set up, mm -hmm. networked, printing out the parts, and then having those parts available immediately within the next day or a couple days. And so it's, it's helping clients save a lot of money on the bottom line to where they could do the manufacturing themselves rather than sending it on out. So those are some of the great things that we're doing now, moving into that space with Raze. Perfect, and, and this is Mark, so Mark has just joined us here. So can you explain a little bit about what your role is within Raze 3D? I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, I came out of the technology industry for 40 years, and, and uh, I told my wife that there's this crazy company called Raze 3D that uh, wants to sell a whole bunch of these 3D printers, and I thought they were about $100,000 a piece. And I said, fantastic, I'm your guy, and I'll build a sales force and so forth. And when I found out they were $3,900 was the top one, and Edward said, yeah, we're going to need to do about $24, $25 million this year. I said, what have I got myself into? <laughs> but um, it's, been a, uh, it's been a wild ride. Uh, I, I'm the executive vice president of the company, and uh, I run the North America, uh, Mexico, Central America, uh, South America, and Canada. Um, and uh, it's been, it's probably been the most excited that I've been in this, in, in my industry uh, or my career uh, at my age to, I, I feel like a, I feel like I'm your age. <laughs> um, uh, I've got a lot of energy and, and um, the thing that's exciting to me is to see what can be done with these printers and to see the lives that are, we're changing with the printers. and. Uh, you know, the prosthetics that uh, our schools are buying these printers for, uh, we have print farms down in Tyler, Texas at an Episcopal school, and I didn't even know what they did, and they called me up and they wanted some blue filament. I said, great, do um, you have our printers? Oh yeah, we have a print farm of these. I said, okay, what do you guys do? We, we make prosthetics for children that can't afford uh, to uh, have a limb uh, produced. And I said, wow. And, and I see, and also our veterans, uh, we, we, and we give them away. Mm -hmm. And so the little girl uh, in Denver that lost her arm wanted uh, PLA blue. Yeah. So uh, we, got a, we got some PLA to her and they printed an arm for her. And so, you know, I, I look at those type of things and you know, that warms my heart. And, and, and it's, um, it's amazing. Every, every day we hear a new application for these printers and people that have, are trying things. And, and really in the educational space, it's those kids, they don't know they can't do it. So they, you know, and you fail. You fail making a print and they try it again and they call and say, well, maybe you need to heat the bed a little hotter or maybe a different filament will work. And so there's just no no in, in them. They say, well, we can do it, we can try it. And, and our companies, um, nimble enough to not say no also and and so we'll try to figure it out with the filament manufacturers and and continue to uh, enhance our product you know one of the things um with make magazine they they put our printer on the uh the cover and i'm supposed to be a pretty good guy when it comes to forecasting <laughs> when i tell the factory how many printers you need and um 
I had no idea we were going to be the printer of the year and and, and, and the you know the best printer out there uh, in that space. All of a sudden, we're out of printers, <laughs> and and we're out of printers not only in in December, we're out of printers in January. So that's not that's a people say, oh that's a really good problem. That's not a good problem. You know, I want everybody to get these these printers uh, when they order them. We want to get them shipped and, and delivered and so forth. But um, it's a uh, it's an interesting world we're living in. You know, I see additive manufacturing, and um, you know we've had customers like General Motors come over to us, and um, they're interested in making uh, you know a lot of custom jigs and, and prototypes. But they're also looking at what they can put into a, a print farm, and and actually have a finished product that will go into the car. So um, this is not something that I, I think we typically think 3D printing is, is prototyping. I'm actually seeing a lot of our customers use it in actual manufacturing. And one of our customers that's here at the show is um, called Shadecraft. And uh, they are launching their product right now, which is called the Sunflower, and it's an umbrella. Uh, and they make that whole umbrella on our printer, 24 inch sections at a time. And they'll have a print farm of 150 of these printers, and they're wow. cranking out. Uh, umbrellas and the umbrella is an eight thousand dollar umbrella, mm -hmm. you know. So it's got Harman <laughs> Kardon speakers in it. It's got it's got uh, uh, blue, you know. It's got Alexa talking to it. It's it's got a computer. It networks and it, you know it goes up by the sun and follows the sun. And I said, wow. Uh, but one of their their issues was uh, it had to be fireproof ABS. Mm -hmm. So we had to figure out who could make some fireproof ABS. And and you know those printers are running twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. And, and so that's, that's manufacturing. Well, yeah, and we saw it when we were doing a project for um, um, a giveaway with a guitar body. We ran about a 108 hour uh, print on and two materials on our N2 Plus and it turned out flawless. And, and we actually had um, Gruber Guitars actually come back and says like, you know, what can we do more with this technology? And, and, and Steve, you were talking a little bit about um, one of your customers in the dental industry. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, what I think is what's really exciting about our technology, where we're heading and the, the, the capabilities of our machine, the resolution where we're at. Um, it's, the dental industry has been a market that's been dominated by the SLA uh, technology. And I, through a friend, I approached uh, one of the top oral surgeons in the country and uh, I said, would you take a look at our machine? He said, sure, I'll try your machine, right? So uh, we lend him the machine. We started working with him on the different filaments, FDA approved filaments and, and all different applications until we, we came up to a, a filament that absolutely worked. And he started printing with that filament. He started printing dental guides, right? These are surgical guides that have to be absolutely exact and absolutely just right on. And so he texted me th this morning and says, by the way, we videotaped my surgery yesterday using your guys' uh, implant guide, and he goes, it went flawlessly. He goes, I'm a firm believer in your printer, the FDM technology, where it's come from and what it can do now. So I think that's a huge testimony right there in a sense of being able to have to go in and have the accuracy that you need, especially in surgery, uh, to have a guide made using our, our technology, our printer, and to have it work flawlessly, I, I, we couldn't get a better, I think, confirmation of our technology and our printer and what we're doing. Well, awesome. Is there anything else that you guys are kind of planning for 2018 <laughs> um, that, you, that you can talk about, can't talk about, want to talk about? Um, is there anything that, that you're really excited about? Um, or is there something that we're going to see later this year that we should maybe hold off well, on? Well, I think, I think because Mark's pay grade here, we'll leave him to answer any super <laughs> secret stuff here. So. Super secrets. I'm the wrong guy. I'm really bad at keeping secrets. Well, I think John over there said you're the guy that to, to yeah, talk with. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I can tell you right now. I don't know if you guys have talked about the uh, the filament runout. We have not. Okay, so you can order right now the filament runout uh, upgrade to the printers. Um, so and you can imagine we're going to release a new printer this year, um, and that will have it as standard. But uh, all of our existing customers that have the product. Uh, can order that upgrade. It's ninety dollars, so it's not a lot of money, um, but it's a box, a switch that mounts in the in the existing uh, uh, printers, and it shuts off automatically. So the printer, so you don't have any more air printing. That's a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I can tell you that. I can tell you you can order a camera, an IP camera, uh, that will be out uh, in uh, March time frame uh, for it. Um, without giving away too many secrets, you might want to think that a air purifying filtration system upgrade might be available for this. Okay. So for schools, um, and, and I know schools are starting, especially in Canada market, yeah. in the Canadian market, that they want to go towards that closed um, yeah. system. Yeah, and we, we have a closed system now, but um, what we're finding with the students, the schools that are buying our printers right now are, are buying N2s and, and N2 pluses. They're not buying N1s. Mm -hmm. We thought it was a little one. <laughs> hey, it's you know it's still $2,100. No, no, well, we got budget. We're going to get the bigger ones. And I said, okay. Well, now you can print all sorts of different materials, and 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 it, it it's it really opens up a liability to us if it's toxic, mm -hmm. and and we just don't know how toxic some of the materials could be because we haven't printed some of them yet. So we're, we will have a charcoal filtration system upgrade uh, for the for the systems, and um, I think that's smart. Yeah. So I can tell you that, and I can I can also tell you just imagine. You know, people, I have to do more explanation of why these printers don't cost more. Um, uh, you know, I'm replacing $50,000 printers, $70,000 printers, $20,000 printers, and they don't understand why our pricing is where it's at, um, which I've never had that problem. I've always, <laughs> in, in the IT world, I had to explain why Cisco or Dell mm -hmm. or EMC was so expensive, and now I have to explain why we're not. Um, just imagine these as production workhorses in major Fortune 100 customer uh, companies in print farms mm -hmm. and being able to be controlled from a central location. You know? I, th I think that would be really, really awesome. I, and we, we're seeing some of that um, with a couple different printers, but I think that'd be really cool with this print volume to be able to do that. Yeah, and it, and it will be. And, and, and quite honestly, um, a lot of the features you'll see in the new printers we come out with are, are it might not look a lot, of diff lot different, but we, we need these things just to be rock solid, out of the box, and, and, and not get a lot of service calls or a lot of questions on how to do stuff with them. You know, part of our issue with being um, the price range we are, we've gotten in the consumer model uh, or consumer market and didn't want to be. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be commercial. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, my neighbor <laughs> bought one of these for his kid for, for Christmas. And he says, hey, Mark, can you bring it upstairs? I said, I said, Walter, it's 187 pounds. He goes, well, I don't want to put it under the tree before Christmas. And I said, this isn't a toy. I said, so I had to get a couple of guys. We brought it. We, we brought it upstairs, covered it with a sheet. And I said, I'm not coming down on Christmas Day and bring it up, put it under the tree. But, you know, his 14-year-old son's got one of our N2 pluses. Well, at least you didn't have to put it in the mantle on the, no, in the stocking. No, I mean. No, no. <laughs> so, anyway, we're having a lot of fun with it. And, and um, you know, I think you're going to see some really good Good things with Rays, and hopefully we'll always remain customer driven, yeah. and and lo looking at where the solutions are. And I think you'll look at Rays Rays being a solutions provider provider versus just a printer manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a combination of the software, the printer uh, filament manufacturers that partner with us, and the service technicians we have around the world, and creating an eco center to solve a customer's problem. And the printer just happens to be one of those solutions. Perfect. Well, I appreciate both of you guys taking the time today to Thanks, uh, to, to chat with me. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to see what you guys have this year and come out with new stuff. And, and we have the N2 Plus, so I'm really excited to, to add new things to that and, and being able to maybe get the next generation <laughs> of Ray's printer once it, uh, once it does hit. Um, so yeah, so thanks guys. Thank um, have a good Thank show, you. and uh, um, hopefully we'll see you at Rapid. Um, for you all, <laughs> perfect. We will be doing the same thing. So hopefully uh, we can talk a little bit more and show actually some of those products that you uh, were chatting about. So uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, definitely subscribe to our, our YouTube channel and uh, stay tuned for more CES footage. Perfect. Thanks. Extruder. Put your name on it.